Good evening. I call to order the May 2017 meeting of the New York Council. Uh, please ask, I ask you to please stand and uh, move the flag with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States of America and, and to, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. As Dave is painting the room, you can see that we have a pack house. Uh, we have a number of, of items tonight that uh, I think make tonight a special occasion. Um, we're going to take things a little bit out of order on our agenda. First thing that we are going to do is uh, turn over to Councilman Peter Williamson because he has a motion to make. Hello, everyone. Most of you are here for the motion I'm about to make. Um, I'm the chair of the Public Safety Committee and the Public Safety Committee met this past month and decided to um, uh, re recommend to the rest of the Borough Council that we hire an additional police officer. And we were lucky at the time we had a very, very excellent candidate who was ready and willing to do the, the job. Uh, last, two weeks ago, Borough Council met in, uh, in an executive session and discussed the matter and voted to uh, proceed. However, that, that vote needs to be ratified before the public, before it's really official. So I'm going to make a motion that we hire, is it Matt? Matthew? Matthew? Mitch. Mitch, Mitch Helman Dollar as our next uh, media bureau police officer. Second. Motion to make, and it has been seconded. Any discussion on motion? Hearing not. Uh, all those in favor, in favor of hiring Mitch Helmendahl as a full-time police officer for the media police department, effective two weeks ago. <laughs> uh, please say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Those opposed? Please say nay. The motion passes. Mr. Helmendahl. Sir Helmendaller's parents, can they please come forward? I'd like to thank Councilman Robinson for seconding the motion. Appreciate that. Uh, and just a uh, little bit uh, from the public safety chairman, Peter. Uh, you said an additional police officer, but I'm not done with you guys yet. So uh, I did thank you for the face was, I understand, but we're trying to get back to where we were. At this time, I'd like to introduce the mayor immediate, uh, Robert McMahon, to the Ministry of the Office to Officer Helmut Dollar. Thank you. Thirty-four years. Thirty-four years, and still directing. <laughs> okay, Mitch. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I, Mitchell Helmand Helmandauer. I, Mitchell Helmandauer. Do upon Sal move. Do upon Sal move. According to the law. According to the law. Declare and say. Declare and say. That I, <laughs> that I will support the Constitution. That I will support the Constitution. Of the United States. Of the United States. And the Constitution. And the Constitution. Of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. That I will faithfully. That I will faithfully. And impartially. And impartially. Perform the duties. Perform the duties. Of police officer. Of police officer. For the borough of media. For the borough of media. With fidelity. With fidelity. comes to the microphone uh, just to acknowledge we have a uh, cadet crew in here tonight wearing a different uniform but they're all over here that we're trying to recruit you guys to be police officers <laughs> that's all right real quickly if I could raise your hand when I acknowledge you Lieutenant Richard Johnson media police Sergeant Matt Egan media police officer Richie White Rich come up front you're a little short media police uh, I, hey don't worry about it Craig Nolan's the same height, Craig Nolan, media police. 
Uh, Officer Jonathan Joseph, media police. Officer Michael Dolan, I got that one right, media police. Danny DeVito, Officer Danny DeVito, media. Sergeant Rob Brown. Uh, Sergeant Robert Cowell. Officer John McCormick. Officer Nikki Young. And from uh, outside the area, I'm trying to look around. Another province, police department. Officer Matt List. Officer Brian Bonas. Officer Mike Coverdale. And newly hired in Markle Township, one of our neighbors, Dave Lero. Thank you. Um, well, first, I want to thank Mitch and his family. Mitch has been here. Uh, Mitch has been sworn in a few times, by the way. Um, mistakenly, early on, and then again, and now a third time. Is that correct, yes, Mitch? Sir. So I'm glad the third, the third time is the charm. So thanks again. Not only want to big time thank Borough Council, but I want to just take this time to introduce uh, some friends and family members that, that came out to support. Uh, first, mother and father, uh, Mark and Christine Avondale. <laughs> Annette, my younger sister, you may, you may stand, please. <laughs> two, grand, two grandparents, Ray and Diane Sanucci. Family friends, the the Marsdens. And coach, friend, co-worker, etc., Anthony DiNicola. That's, that's just about it. But I just uh, once again I'm I'm, I'm really excited. Uh, can't wait to, to get out there and, and keep doing hard work and Making the community a safe place. Uh, I kind of like his demeanor. I'm really excited. Uh, <laughs> but at this time, I'd like to call upon Officer Helen Dollar's mother to come up. It's a tradition that we give uh, the, the, the mother a small gift from the men and women who serve in the media police department. And we promise his parents and family members and friends he's one of ours and we will protect him in each and every day that he works. Thank you. If anybody would like to take pictures of uh, <laughs> I would like to thank uh, the mayor and the borough council for their uh, support in these measures to keep media safe. Uh, it's a mission that we've accepted and a charge that we will continue to do to make media the, the safest community in Delaware County. Thank you all. As is traditional, let us take a few minutes for a five minutes to uh, allow people to leave the room and if they wish to assemble just outside the room uh, for, for further picture taking. So uh, we'll be back at 8.15. We're back in session. Thank you. Um, we're back in session. Thank you. Uh, please rise. I'm calling for a moment of silence in memory of a gentleman who used to sit behind, maybe not this exact table, but he used to sit behind this table as a council person. Going back a few years, uh, 1960s and 70s, but Robert Tippett was a gentleman who served as borough and served you well for quite some time, and he recently passed away. So please, for a moment, solve your memory. Thank you. His memory is almost physically present in this room. And so we have the son who is sitting in our audience tonight. Um, many of you might know him because uh, he helped guide your children safely to school. <laughs> and, and his grandson. Um, and and great-grandson. Great oh, goodness. <laughs> <laughs> 
We've got the whole family tree and flower here. Um, and uh, his daughter-in-law. Yes, daughter. Daughter. And daughter. Right. Okay. Um, the gang is all good. Um, but uh, we are pleased to remember him uh, as a man of service and uh, anyone who gives up their time and gives up their treasure to serve the public uh, should be remembered. So we uh, thank you very much for being here tonight. Thank you. Mr. President, thank you. We appreciate this. <coughs> thank you. Um, all right, so uh, we have a few items for take care of uh, for housekeeping. Um, we have uh, several meeting minutes, uh, three sets, in fact. Uh, the first one is from April 6, 2017, with public hearing concerning the purchase of uh, property on Washington <coughs> Street. Uh, do I hear a motion to approve those meeting minutes as submitted? So moved. Do it. Uh, Second. Second. There it is, Scott. There we go. All those in favor of approving the April 6, 2017 public hearing minutes, please say aye. Uh, yes. Aye. aye. Those opposed, please say aye. <coughs> the motion passes. The second set of minutes is for our workshop of April 6, 2017. Do you have a motion to approve those as submitted? So moved. Second. And uh, I'll take that as a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say aye. The motion passes. And then the last set of meeting minutes is for our council meeting of last month, April 20, 2017. Do I hear a motion to approve those as submitted? So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving council meeting minutes from April 20, 2017 as submitted, please say aye. Yes. Aye. Aye. Those opposed, please say aye. The motion passes. All right, so we've taken care of some housekeeping matters. We now come to public comment and uh, privilege of the floor. But uh, maybe before I do that, I think the mayor has a couple of items that uh, he would like to address now. Yes. Um, uh, Fern, uh, Mr. Mathis, Eric, you want to come up here? Okay. I'm redecorating the room. All right, first I want to con uh, congratulate Fern, and I'm going to read the proclamation. Uh, so uh, the proclamation reads, uh, Borough Media Proclamation 2017 04. so we've only done four proclamations this year, um, honoring Fern Mathis 44 years of service to Rose Tree Media School District. So it says, whereas Fern Mathis has dedicated 44 years of service to the Rose Tree Media School District in Glenwood Elementary School, and whereas Ms. Matt, Matt, Mathis excuse me, has been a mentor to many, promoting the growth and development of countless children and educators, and whereas the knowledge of teaching and the curriculum has allowed her to serve as a, as a distinguished role model for the entire Rose Tree Media School District, and whereas in addition to her 44 years of dedicated service to teaching, Mrs. Mathis has participated and raised money for cancer research. She has created a cancer walk, Woody's Walk for the Cure, which honors the fight of Glenwood Elementary teachers who are fighting the fight and have lost the fight and have lost their fight to cancer. And whereas Media Burroughs proud to recognize Fern Mathis and her many years of dedicated <coughs> service, and now, now therefore be it resolved that Media Burrow extends its appreciation and congratulations to Fern Mathis on her retirement. Thank you so much. I really, really am tickled by this honor. Um, Glenwood's motto is making a world of difference for students who will make a difference in the world. And I've truly enjoyed doing it for 44 years, but I couldn't have done it without the help of my hubby, Lamont, and my many colleagues, and my current principal, Eric Bucci. I've had eight principals, believe it or not, in 44 <laughs> years. And Eric's been wonderful. Uh, and I have some colleagues sitting right here in the audience who came for this special honor to my surprise. So we have Crystal Grace Green and Betsy Hennessy and Susan Taylor and Patty Jackson. Yeah, so I've worked with them for a long, long time and everyone is just so special. All the families I've worked with, so dear, and I've just enjoyed every single year. Thank you so much, I really appreciate it.
Okay, we're not doing these in order. This is Proclamation 2017 05. So this is the fifth proclamation this year. So, Terry, Robin, you want to get up? And Pastor Mays, too, please. Pastor Mays? Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't see you, Pastor Mays. How are you? Fine, yourself? Okay. <laughs> so, you get an orange shirt, too, just like I got. Mm -hmm. You got it the same day I got. Yeah. Yeah. Terry, I'm going to read the proclamation first. Sure. Recognizing June 2nd, 2017 as Gun Violence Awareness Day in Ely Borough. And I'm not going to pronounce her first name correctly, am I? Adia? Adia? Okay. Whereas Adia Pendleton, a 15-year-old girl, marched with her drill team in President Obama's 2013 inaugural celebration and then came home to Chicago and a few days later was killed by gunfire. And whereas her friends on the drill team were orange to memorialize her death because hunters wear orange in the woods, protect themselves from gunfire, and these young people felt they needed to be protected from gunfire on their streets. And whereas orange has been adopted as the color of the National Gun Sense Movement, and whereas June 2nd is National Gun Violence Awareness Day and was established to draw attention to the 33,000 Americans who lose their lives to gun violence each year, and whereas Delaware County United for Sensible Gun Policy is holding an event at the Second Baptist Church of Media on Friday, June 2nd, I believe that's at 6.30, to commence National Gun Violence Awareness Day. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the borough media establishes June 2nd, 2017 as Gun Violence Awareness Day in media and urges all residents to wear orange to participate in the event at the Second Baptist Church of Media and to be aware of tragic consequences of gun violence in Delaware County, in Pennsylvania, and across the United States of America, signed on May 18th, 2017. Thank you. Terry Rumsey, 342 West 4th Street, <laughs> here in the borough, and I want to thank the mayor and council for proclaim, proclaiming June 2nd as Gun Violence Awareness Day. It's a reminder that gun violence is not a natural phenomenon. It is a problem caused by humans, and we believe we can pull together and solve that problem by passing sensible gun policies. I'm going to uh, give the mic to the co-chair and my partner in marriage and organizing, Robin Lasserson. She's just going to speak very briefly about the event that's happening on June 2nd. And then we'd like Pastor <coughs> Mays uh, to say something because it's happening, the rally is happening at his church. We would just like to invite the community to join with us in common cause of sensible gun policy by attending the Wear Orange Rally and Walk on Friday, June 2nd at 6.30 p.m. at Second Baptist Church. We'll have an indoor rally uh, with speakers including Congressman Robert Brady, State Senator Tom Killian, several other elected officials, uh, people who've been personally affected by gun violence, who have important <coughs> stories to tell, We'll also have music and poetry, and when the rally is over, we will process along State Street to share our message uh, of sensible gun policy in our orange shirts. And up to Orange Street, we will come back down State Street and end the event with a short ceremony at Plum Street Mall. So we hope that you can join us. We, Plum Street Mall will, have, will be lit in orange. It will be um, a... a uh, will be a dramatic uh, environment and just a reminder of what we can all do to reduce gun violence in our communities. Thank you. Let me first thank the mayor and media Brown council for making this evening a great evening to spearhead what we're trying to do. And as pastor of the Second Baptist Church here in media, I invite all of you and all of us to join together in this effort to help to bring about the cause that's much needed, not just in Delaware County, as you know, throughout the country. Thank you so much, our leaders, and we got this. We come bearing gifts, too. We'd like to start by presenting an event t-shirt to Mayor McMahon, and also to the members of council. <coughs> And we do invite all the members of council and the mayor to come on June 2nd. Thank you all. Quite an eventful evening so far. Um, we 
we have gone a little bit of, out of order this evening. I'd like to see if we can kind of get back to our normal order. We have at both the beginning as well as the end of our meetings a public opportunity for the public to comment on items of the agenda or bring to our attention items they believe uh, need some illumination for council. If anybody wishes to address council at this time, please come forward to the microphone, state your name and where you live. Hello, Council President. Uh, my name is Larry Elias. Is it on day? Yeah. Larry. I'm the uh, Youth Program Coordinator for Media Rugby. And uh, mm -hmm. two things we're here for. Uh, first is to acknowledge the uh, support of the borough and the borough council. We just have a, a plaque that we wanted to present to you guys. Really appreciate the support. It's, it's every year we try to grow this program a little bit. And the support we got from the borough council is really making things happen for us at an accelerated pace. So thank you very much. Um, talked a little bit with the mayor and with the chief about uh, our weekend. We're planning to head. We're planning up to head up to uh, Mechanicsburg for the Rugby Pennsylvania State Championships. We have both our varsity high school team and our uh, junior high school team uh, playing for uh, semifinals on Saturday and hopefully finals championship game on uh, Sunday. So um, I did ask. You know, hopefully we're going to come come home with some hardware. And, you know, maybe we can. Uh, uh, show some, show, we'll show it off, to, show it off down state street. Show it yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, Larry, I just wanted to comment that uh, I learned firsthand how good the rugby team is. If you lined up against my son's grandson, I think I fixed them up. Sorry, my grandson's Westchester team, and it was fifty to nothing at halftime. <laughs> and I think he told me one of the seventy something to nothing. I stayed till the end. And I rooted for you, Larry. <laughs> well, we, we appreciate the support. Yeah. Um, the, the high school varsity team uh, is really having an exceptional season. Yeah. Um, there's a couple tight games coming up. We had an excellent match on last Sunday, the uh, quarterfinal match at home at Rose Trail Elementary School. And uh, I think it was Mother's Day, of course, but I think we had four or 500 people uh, watching the match. So it was a it was really neat to do that at home. I mean, it's a, that's a pretty special thing when you do that. So, thank you very much. See you Sunday. You should be quite proud of yourselves because you are one of the first youth rugby programs, I believe, in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Uh, as old as I am, many of my friends played youth rugby in high school, and that was the first first time you even heard of it. And so, uh, a couple of years later, you guys are now going to be uh, you're going to be state champs. Well, we hope so. There you go. Good luck. Yeah. Anybody else wish to address council at this time? Uh, we have a, quite a quite a grouping of uh, young men and all of tops over there. Um, oh, the mayor is pointing it, it just as to give me some information. Troop 277 from Wallingford, PA, visiting as part of earning their communications merit badge, which is required for the rank of Eagle, which is uh, quite an accomplishment as you do with Anus. Um, anybody wish to speak on behalf of Troop? <laughs> Thank you for recognizing us. Uh, it was a pleasure to uh, see the workings of the council. Unfortunately, we can only stay a short period of time, but uh, we appreciate you uh, allowing us to be here and, and seeing how things work. Of course. Okay. Please come back anytime. Yes. We'll do it. Thank you. Unless there's anybody else who addresses to address council at this time, we we'll move along to. Oh, we do have. Please come forward. Good evening, Mayor and Council members. Uh, my name is Deacon Kevin Robinson. This is Deacon Akins, and we're from the uh, Second Baptist Church of Media. And um, I just wanted to take this opportunity to uh, express. Uh, a little concern about the vacant lot uh, behind the church. Um, I'm not accurate of the address of it, but I, I understand it was um, asked about and uh, it was considered for a dog park. Um, and I'm here this evening uh, along with my pastor and 
fellow deacon uh, to ask for consideration for it to be a parking lot for the Second Baptist Church of Media. Uh, it would enhance uh, some of the parking where we, we really don't have much parking um, right now. Uh, the parking during the climate weather uh, limits us from parking in front of the church because that's an emergency highway and we're unable to park there. Uh, right now, um, there's just like a half of street that we're able to park on. And so I'm here this evening just to ask uh, for consideration um, to hear our plea uh, that you would consider us for that parking lot that we might be able to convert it into a um, parking lot for the church. So uh, I guess I can, I can deliver. Could I, could I address that actually? Yes. This is our this is a solicitor of uh, Bob Scott. Yeah, this this property is in the process of being donated to the borough uh, for parkland. And under a Pennsylvania law that I don't recall the name of, um, parkland, it, when, when parkland is donated, if it is not used for parkland, it reverts to the donor. Uh, so it is not permissible uh, under this donation for it to be used for anything but parkland. Uh, and maybe some further clarification. There was some thought as to a possible dog park there, but in meeting with various other residents, but we've decided that that is not a suitable place for a dog park, and rather it would be more of a passive park. Um, and uh, we have uh, put together a, a kind of a rough schematic of what that would look like. I think it's available on uh, our website. You can see it there. So if part of the concern was the amount of activity that we generated by a dog park, then that will not be, there will not be a dog park there. There will be a passive park there, as our solicitor has pointed out. If we don't use it as parkland, then we cannot accept it. We have to give it back. Okay. So, Brother President, you were saying that uh, it's not possible that it can become a uh, space of parking for uh, for automobiles and things that particularly we've saw in the future? That's right. If, so if, we, if it's used for something other than a park, then we, we have to give it back. Right. That's essentially what happens. Give it back to the uh, the original owners. That's right. right. And the possibility then that it would be available for uh, sale or something of that particular sort. So I understand that the park lot was really actually donated. It was owned once by uh, Media Real, Real Estate Real That's Company, right. and they donated it to the borough. And, um, you know, so we just thought it was simply that we would have a great opportunity uh, to plead out and due to the fact that. The church, as you know, have been really actually sitting in that corner for East State Street for 115 years. And as my fellow even had really actually indicated, we're suffering to a certain degree, looking for additional space. And due to the fact that Walmart now is coming to that particular area, things is getting more and more tighter. So we um, thank you so much, please, for just listening to our cry. And hopefully, if there's something that can be done in our behalf, or in, uh, we will really highly appreciate it, please. Yeah. Williams, my recollection is that if there is, once the park is uh, finished, that there will be some additional parking spots uh, available. So my, I don't know the, 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 the part of the site closer to Wawa. There may be. I, I, I don't know the site kind of well enough to answer that question. I think you're right. I think at the end of the street, where the street ends, they are going to put some parking closest to Wawa. So, so it's not right next to the church. But it's sort of where that double-decker bus is now? Right. The park right. back there? Yeah. I think that's going to remain park. But closer to your church, it's going to be green. We hope that the church would be able to use the park for events or, you know, reflection. So it's open to the public, which means, you know, the church would be able to use it as well. Okay, sure. Thanks very much. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Does anyone else wish to address council at this time? Hearing no call for further discussion from the public, we'll move along to the engineer's report and some action. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I apologize for not making the last meeting workshop meeting from the museum. It circulated through everybody in my house, and I now have a gathering. We're quite glad you didn't come. <laughs> 
comments around uh, those. Right? As you can tell, there yeah. is construction for the road program. We did have the pre-construction meeting on the 9th of May, and that was uh, helpful in facilitating all the paperwork so we can get it expedited. We communicated with the contractor that the borough has the five mile race in June. We want to make sure that everything was completely done uh, before the five mile race. So uh, the timetable is to work on the ADA ramps first, get those out of the way. For the first two weeks, the contractor in con uh, is reporting that it will take about two days to do all the milling and resurfacing. Mm -hmm. So I think the road program should be wrapped up well before the five mile. Excellent. Fantastic. Uh, we're working on about uh, 35 different projects all over town, from land development things, from uh, a number of different reports and studies. One of which just wanted to touch on was the survey and phase one study for the uh, property that uh, took in which is underway. I expect to have that in the borough manager's hands for real. Uh, unless there are any other specific questions, perhaps I can touch on the CMAC. CMAC was a sidewalk grant that the borough obtained a considerable amount of funding for uh, through great efforts of our grant writing staff. Our team is putting together a uh, detailed engineering sketch plan that's in uh, pretty much in finalized form in our office. It will be ready for consideration by uh, our manager and then for circulation to those stakeholders that will need to provide feedback and commentary on it. So, busy work. Thank you, Mr. Matson. Does anyone have any questions for our engineer? Did the CMAC grant uh, stipulate the particular sidewalks that you wanted to do? Yes. However, I spoke to uh, John Costi, I think his name was, at, who was one of the administrators for the grant. And I asked him, after we walked and took a look at some specific areas, there were concerns about uh, some pin oaks, some concerns about grading. I said, how much flexibility do we have here? And he said, you have a, a pretty pretty wide latitude. If there's something that doesn't make sense, you're, you're not completely restricted by the original submission. So he said, just take a look at it, and when the engineers come up with the final uh, nuts and bolts diagram, send it back, and we'll, you know, as long as that the total cap of what was allocated doesn't get exceeded, they had um, a lot of flexibility. So I was very happy to hear. Good. Yeah. Are there any other questions for Mr. Get back. Thank you. Um, all right, so let's move along to the solicitor's report. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I do not have a report. I will have one brief executive session item regarding the real estate transaction. All right. Any questions for Council for, for our, our Council Bob Scott? Hearing none. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I understand you still have a portion of your report that needs to be made. Very brief. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, there were 750 complaints during the month of April 2017. Um, uh, also, in your handouts, there's a copy of information concerning prospective part-time police officer, Kirsten Cole, uh, that you have. And also, Memorial Day weekend on Sunday, the Clydesdales are coming back. Uh, they were scheduled from 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock. They're making about, they, they're coming here to deliver beer to their customers. And they've gone from, I think, what was 8 last year to as many as 16 now. So this is going to be one long parade. So it was scheduled to start at 2. Um, it may be moved up to 12 because Channel 6 goes live at 12, and we think this is interesting enough for them. So what we want to do is get a timeline from the um, Clyde Scales group, timeline from the horses, actually, <laughs> to see what their schedule is actually going to be. So if they're making 16 stops, by the, by the time they get to our uh, it may be an hour, an hour and a half later. So we want everybody not to be standing out there for all the day waiting for this. So, so we're getting that pretty much organized, I think, on Monday. So we'll let everybody know what, what's going on there. But five sales were exciting last year. We learned some lessons, some hard learned lessons, like get the cars off the street, so the five sales have a little bit more room. So we are doing that. Yeah, they are big horses. Um, Memorial Day, uh, 10 o'clock. Uh, Brief parade ceremony in front of uh, the courthouse. Uh, Ralph Gawadi, uh, prisoner of war from uh, Vietnam, will be our primary speaker and uh, uh, I'm our only speaker. Uh, <clears throat> and that'll be at 10 o'clock. <clears throat> Usually it's finished by about 10:45. So council members are invited and uh, so it's the public. That's it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Does anyone have any questions or comments for the mayor? All right.
right, we'll move along then to the council committee reports. And uh, as tradition, we will start from my right and to my left. Recreation and Board of Health, Councilman Boyer. Thank you, Mr. President. I do have a brief announcement from Board of Health. Um, I want to remind everyone out there, especially borough residents, it is mosquito season. Um, please uh, try to eliminate any source of standing water. Mosquitoes hatch um, in as little as 24 to 48 hours after they lay their eggs. So it doesn't take much, even something like that, maybe an upturned frisbee with some water in it, um, can breed mosquitoes. So the more standing water you get rid of, the less mosquitoes around. So something to consider now that we are in this summer-like uh, summer -like weather. Uh, regarding recreation, uh, registration is currently underway for summer camp. I don't have the exact starting date, but I know they generally begin the week after school is out, which is generally mid-June. For the first time this year, summer camp will run, will run from 9 in the morning until 5 in the evening. Uh, so I think they've extended that by two hours this year. Um, the price for non-borough residents is $150 per week. For resident, it is $95 a week. The uh, borough does subsidize residents, borough residents. Uh, for summer camp. So you can contact Paula at the borough number, extension 255, to find the details on how to uh, enroll in summer camp. Um, there will be three movie nights this summer, the first of which is Friday, June 9th. This corresponds to the end of the year picnic for the elementary school, media elementary. Uh, the movies to be determined, I believe the students are voting on the, uh, the movie for that night, so uh, stay tuned for the title. The other two movie nights will be Saturday, July 8th, and uh, Saturday, August the 12th, so hopefully We'll have a nice weather uh, for those. Uh, there are a few trips. Uh, one trip that the Rec Commission is sponsoring is on Friday, June 30th, to the Wilmington Blue Rocks. They annually do a bus trip, and that corresponds with a night when they have fireworks. So the tickets are $10. Uh, with that, you get a free bus um, to the Wilmington Blue Rocks and, uh, and back home again. So again, you get details from Paula for, uh, for that. The uh, Rec Commission is also sponsoring a union game. Tickets are $20. That will be August the 12th, which is a Saturday, the afternoon of one of the movie nights. That's a home game for the union. And um, in the future, one of the projects Rec is looking at is to expand the top lot. And I talked with our, our engineer, Kevin, and hopefully within the next uh, few weeks or, or not too distant future, we'll start to get some sketches together and, uh, and look to move this forward through uh, the proper uh, proper channels, but uh, there is a lot of interest. Paul we'll put out a survey and hopefully we can expand the playground and add some equipment for uh, kids to somewhat So stay tuned to that. And uh, that can be very important. Thank you. Any questions for? Kevin, do you know what? Sorry, do you know when the tennis camp is? Uh, it's on Friday, June thirtieth. Okay. Okay. The tennis camp. Generally, that is after summer camp is up. Um, I don't have exact dates, but it's usually um, I'm going to say early August, um, mid August, something like that. And they generally offer two weeks, one week for younger kids and one week for older kids. So uh, at the next meeting, they'll probably finalize that and I'll, I'll let you know. Okay. So, you, you and I, have, I have one additional piece of information. Media Rack Board is a sponsor of a concert series in the, in the Glen Providence Park this summer. And the Friends of Glen Providence Park are kicking off their season on June 3rd which is a Saturday, and we've changed the time from 4.30 to 5 o'clock um, that the event starts, and this year's first event is um, a storyteller. His name is Odds Bodkin. Bodkin, you can find him in, on the internet, Just Google Odds Bodkin, and um, he's a fantastic storyteller. I mean, children love it, but adults do too. So consider making a night of it, and after the Hearing the storyteller go up in the shop or eat up on State Street. All right, any other questions for Councilman Boyer? Here we go. We'll move on to Councilman Lisa Johnson. Thank you. Um, I have one uh, matter to, to make to make a motion on accepting the resignation of Laura Proctor from the Historical Architectural Review Board. Her term expires in December 31, 2020. Um, she's not able to um, continue working on the board due to other commitments that she has. So I make a motion to accept her resignation. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? Here we go. All those in favor of accepting the resignation of Laura Proctor with reluctance from the Historical Architecture Review Board, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say aye. The motion passes. <coughs> um, I have another comment on the Memorial Day Clydesdale Parade. Um, I just wanted to be known that the 
some of the uh, Community Business Authority board members have donated money to help offset the cost of the parade. Those people are Courtney Rosas, Brian Messick, Christopher Doherty, Jack Cunatelli, and Puffin Rock. I also want to mention that the State Street Blue Stroll will be on Saturday, June 10th, featuring a natural, national act, Ruthie Foster, and tickets are on sale now at statestreetblues.com. And I don't have anything else to report for Hard or the Historical Society. Thank you. Any questions for Councilman Lisa Johnson? Carrying on, we'll move on to Vice President uh, Councilman Paul Robinson. Good evening. Uh, as I always do, I'm going to do my little promotion for the fire company, uh, asking anyone who would be interested in serving as a volunteer, either as a firefighter and or in the administrative office, please stop by uh, the firehouse and, and offer your time. Uh, with regards to the April runs, uh, media had 15, three were light manpower, uh, one was uh, the daytime fire alarm, we did 20 mutual aids, and the big news is that there was a dumpster fire in the 100 block of West State Street, the first night of dining out of the store, so I was not there, but I guess that was a little bit exciting, right? No, it was third night, it was about 4,000. Okay, now I'm just going off the off the report. Uh, I also had the opportunity this week to attend a, a seminar with regards to, to fire needs and it was uh, enlightening. I could go on for some time but two quick facts is number one is ten billion dollars a year the Commonwealth saves by having volunteer firefighting versus paid firefighters. However, the sad thing is, in 1970, there were over 300,000 volunteer firefighters in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And as of this point in the 2000s, we are down to 44,000 volunteers. The individual giving the, the presentation referenced that if this continues by the year 2020, we will no longer have enough manpower for volunteers. The average volunteer firefighter has served their community for over 30 years. We can go back to uh, Ed Senior, who just last month we recognized for serving 62 years and continuing serving the borough. This is something that this borough council needs to uh, recognize, mm -hmm. that the time of volunteerism is slowly diminishing and we need to recognize and start to put away for that. Uh, with regards to agenda items, uh, one that is not on my agenda but it is a interesting one is uh, I am going to make a motion to approve resolution 2017-23. This is regarding disposal of a 1994 Elgin street sweeper. <laughs> Uh, we put it on Municipid and actually another municipality in Western Pennsylvania uh, is interested and we will be uh, selling this if we pass tonight uh, for a whopping $2,700. So I would make a motion that the Borough Media uh, dispose of the 1994 Elgin Street, Street Sweeper for the dollar amount of $2,700. Motion to make and it has been seconded. Is there any discussion on the motion? Good luck to the municipalities. <laughs> That's good to say. It's going to be harder for them to get it from here to there than it is. Uh, the best. Let's get to chat first. Um, any other comments? Constructive or otherwise? So there's some purchase. Um, all right. Now, public question. All those in favor of uh, 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 this is by regular resolution. resolution. Yeah. Adopting resolution 2017-23 with regard to the sale of one of our street sweepers for the amount of twenty seven hundred dollars please say aye aye, aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay the motion passes and, and paul this does not leave us street sweeper yes yeah, we actually have a 2016 yes and uh, anybody who's lived in the town recognizes that the new one is significantly quieter uh and uh, does a much better job but hey everything that's newer works a little bit better i guess uh next on my agenda uh, is 
the borough right now is in the process of, of looking at some possible real estate needs and, and uh, negotiations. Uh, I wish I could be more specific, but I can't at this point. And however, we need to look to outside uh, professionals to assist us. And so I'm going to ask that we uh, make a motion to ratify the hiring of a legal counsel by the name of Steve Bahadis. Close enough. <laughs> and the architectural firm of Lynn Architects to assist the borough. That's the form of a motion. Second. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of hiring Stephen Pahees as special legal counsel and Bob Lynn, uh, Bob Lynn Architects as an uh, architect uh, for the purpose of this project, um, please say aye. Yes. Uh, aye. Those opposed, please say nay. The motion passes. Okay. Uh, and before I, I move on, as we know, uh, in, in executive session last week or two weeks ago, I was the single no vote with regards to hiring a new police officer. That was something that, that personally bothered me because I have had the privilege of hiring 12 of the 15 police officers that now <laughs> sit on or stand on the force. And that truly did weigh on me. And I started to think of, you know, are there, is there something else that I could do? And I recognized that I voted no not because of Mitch. Mitch did everything he needed to do. He took his civil service exam, he did an outstanding job. His interview with us, I thought, was stellar. It was the process in which this borough council moved to hire him. That was disturbing to me. Uh, I was glad that I recognized that. I was glad that I was able to second the motion and vote for Mitch tonight. But I am more concerned with the, the, the process in which it occurred. That concludes my report. Any questions or comments for Councilman Robinson? Hearing none, um, I'll only add that uh, six of the seven members of council were satisfied with the process, and it was on that basis that we made our decision. I understand that all of you disagreed with that, but the majority of council was, uh, felt that the process was appropriate. Okay, so now we move on to my portion of the agenda. I do have a few agenda items. I think we can go through them fairly quickly. Uh, the first one is with regard to reimbursement agreement uh, with PENDOF, uh, with regard to the partial breach, breach of the third street dam. This is something of a housekeeping matter. It uh, permits some of the money that uh, PENDOT has for the third street dam project to be used for purposes of a temporary breach of the dam that is being done by uh, the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection. So some money has to go from the PennDOT pocket into the PADEP pocket. And that, that has to be reflected in the paperwork that we have. So resolution 2017-20 permits that transfer of funds from one to the other so that the partial breach, which is underway, um, will be funded. So I make that in the form of a motion. Motion is made. Is there a second to the motion? Second. Motion is made and second. Any discussion with regards to the motion? All those in favor of passing resolution 2017-20, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Ayes have it. I guess a, another comment is in order here. That roughly about two and a half years away from construction of a dam. Uh, the partial breach will relieve some of the concern that uh, the state agencies, agencies have as to a potential failure of the existing dam. So uh, this will relieve that concern. And uh, in a few years from now, two and a half to three years, uh, that's the timeline that we have now for the construction of a new dam with a road across it. Um, item number two, uh, this is resolution 2017 -20 one the submission of a grant for the Plum Street Mall enhancements. For a number of years now, we've been looking at Plum Street and thinking about ways that we can improve it. Of course, money becomes an issue. Nothing happens free. Nothing worthwhile happens free, at least uh, uh, in governmental work. Um, and um, we have a, a preliminary design that is available to be viewed on the borough website. Uh, we can use this design as part of the grant application. So now that we have the design in hand, we can make uh, application for grant funds. And uh, 
that's what this resolution is about. Um, there is money available for uh, uh, moving forward with uh, improvements on Plum Street Mall, but we have to be able to win. So uh, uh, this resolution will permit us uh, to apply for money to help us achieve um, improvements on Plum Street Mall. So I make that in the form of a motion. I'll second that motion. Any discussion with regards to the motion? All those in favor of passing resolution 2017-21 for the school for grant for the Plum Street Mall enhancements, please say aye. 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 As opposed, ayes have it. Item number three is also in the, it's something of a housekeeping matter. Um, a couple months back, we hired eConsult out of Philadelphia to work on a downtown economic business strategy plan. And uh, there's always paperwork involved in these, uh, in these matters, especially when there's grant money involved. Uh, we received grant money to help pay for that study. And once we have selected the, uh, the, the, the consultant, we now have to uh, submit those materials, uh, the contract materials, uh, to the grant provider. And uh, that's what this motion is about. It's essentially allowing us uh, to sign off on those uh, on the documents that are necessary for us to receive the grant monies and, and proceed with the work. So I make that in the form of a motion that we approve the, uh, the agreement for economic development project involving the downtown business strategy consultant e -consult. I'll second that just so I don't have to try to repeat it. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I just for my claim, this is really just nothing more than that Henry for that, that agreement with TCDI in regards to the economic with the consultant economic development project in the downtown. We're signing off on the okay. agreement. Any discussion regarding the motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. 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 All right. Uh, next item is an appointment of a, of a young, of a, of a young uh, person. Um, I guess I'm showing my <laughs> young person. Uh, Paul is laughing because he knows where I might speak. Uh, but uh, we have had for uh, several months a vacancy on the Planning Commission. And uh, the Planning Commission has been busy reviewing applications from persons who are interested in filling that vacancy. And uh, they have recommended that Provo Council, which does the appointing, appoint Jessica File Houseman to that vacant uh, position on the Planning Commission. And so I am going. I move that uh, we appoint her to the Planning Commission for a term that will expire December 31st, 2018. Second. Motion made. Second. Any discussion with regards to the motion? All those in favor of passing Resolution 2017-22 with the appointment of Jessica File Houseman to the Planning Commission for a term expiring 12-31-18. Please say aye. 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 Those opposed. Ayes have it. Items number five and six are related um, and um, have a, something of a special bearing on a person who is here with us this evening. Item number five is a, a motion to accept the resignation of Frank Lee as our part-time facilities maintenance, maintenance, maintenance person. Um, the the part-time facility maintenance person essentially is the person who will come around at night, make sure the doors are locked, everything is in order so that uh, the, uh, the next day can start smoothing. Um, the gentleman who currently does that work has told us that he wishes to uh, resign from that position. So I move that we accept his, resi his resignation. Second. Motion made and second. Any discussion with regards to the motion? All those in favor of accepting the resignation of Frank Lee as part time facilities made this position, we say aye. 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 Those opposed? Ayes have it. Item number six is the related motion. Um, uh, what goes up must come down, what goes in must come out, and uh, if we have someone who resigns, then of course we'd like to fill that position if they, there's still need, and there is. Um, and uh, we have uh, received some applications for that position, and we have decided that uh, a gentleman by the name of Dave Saccone, am I pronouncing that correct, Dave? I got the two thumbs up. Uh, Dave is the fellow who uh, every uh, third Thursday of each month is here with us, and uh, he tries to make us look good with his camera. He knows a tough job and does a good job at it. Um, and he has been very reliable, very pleasant, and he would like to come and expand his, uh, his talent and responsibilities with the borough. Um, and uh, he has been recommended to for the position of the part-time facilities maintenance um, uh, person. So I, I move that we hire 
uh, Dave Saccone to that position. I'll second that. All those in favor of hiring Dave Saccone as a part-time facilities maintenance worker, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, ayes have it. Item number seven is a motion to hire a part-time turnkey. Turnkeys are those folks that uh, uh, during off hours uh, when there has been an arrest or there needs to be, somebody needs to be held in custody, uh, they will come in and they will watch over uh, the, uh, uh, the jail facilities and make sure that everything that goes as it ought to go. Uh, we have a number of these persons. The chief has recommended that a gentleman by the name of Charles Bothwell uh, be hired in that position. So I move that Charles Bothwell be hired as a part-time attorney. Second. Motion made, second made is suggestion with regards to the motion. Peter, I'd like to say, I mean, that was one of the areas that was uh, being discussed in public safety, that, the, that we'd be looking at the use of uh, the current keys or having that position be more of, it, of doing handling paperwork, things of that nature, and not just current key. Any movement with that? It's, no, no, to be honest with you. I mean, it, it's certainly something that we're going to talk about in public safety, but we really haven't done it in any great detail yet. So uh, I think it's probably best to proceed with this until we know better what we're going to do. Okay, all those in favor of hiring Charles Bethwell? Is that it? Bothwell, B O T H W B L O. For the position of part time turnkey, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Ayes have it. Uh, item number eight, which is the last um, action item on my portion of the agenda, is an awful lot of words for a fairly simple concept. Um, it, at present, we have a contract, a uh, union contract, um, for a position known as public information officer. Uh, that position is uh, essentially the person who sits downstairs by the police uh, by the police station. If you have to pay a ticket, um, that's, you probably know uh, the person who's in that position. We do not have any full-time uh, persons in that position. Um, and uh, in fact, we, had, we don't have anybody uh, who is in that uh, position. Um, we, the contract for, with the union for that position expires at the end of this year. There's a provision that, that we wish to terminate uh, that contract, but we do so by June 1 of this year. We do that by letter that we send it to the union. And that's what this motion is about. It's uh, authorizing and sending up that letter. So essentially, we're sending a letter to advise the union that uh, we are terminating that position for which there's no one in that position at the present time. Uh, but it's something that we need to do under the contract. Otherwise, uh, we hold, we, so we have a contract for a position that no one is in that position. Um, so I'm to make it in a form of motion that uh, we send a letter uh, notifying the union that we are terminating the uh, contract of public information officer and informational assistant. I'll second that motion. Any discussion with regards to the motion? All those in favor of sending a letter to the union with regards to termination of the public information officer and inform informational assistance collective bargaining agreement, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Ayes have it. A couple of announcements. Uh, the first of which is that this coming Saturday at 11.30 at the library, uh, there will uh, be a ceremony for the Philadelphia Art Museum Inside Out program. Uh, it's a way of formally kicking off uh, this summer's uh, this summer's program in media. Many of you, I'm sure, have seen that throughout town there are uh, full-size reproductions of a number of different artworks, whether at the school, the library, in front of the courthouse, uh, in front of Trader Joe's, in a number of other places. Uh, the Arts Council uh, will be there, will be at the library at 1130 uh, in the morning this Saturday, and uh, there will be something of a tour throughout town of those artworks. So it's a great way to come on out on Saturday morning and uh, see these new additions to media. Uh, so if you're interested, please come out. Um, the, other, uh, the other announcement is with regard to executive session. It is my duty to uh, note that the last, uh, our last meeting two weeks ago, uh, we met in executive session to discuss a personal matter, real estate matter, and a litigation matter. We hit the trifecta. Um, so uh, that's my agenda. Anything else for Council President Hall? Okay, I'll back to you. Thank you. I will move along to Councilman Williamson, Finance Library, Public Safety. This should be pretty brief. I'll start with a few library announcements. Um, the new library director started on May 1st. Her name is Sandra Samuel. Uh, she comes from Lansdowne Library, I think, most recently. 
great, great person. I encourage you to go and meet her. The first book sale occurred in the library just a couple weeks ago. And uh, the final numbers aren't in yet, but it's pretty clear it's done at least as well, if not better, than the, the last one. And they've been going up each time. So there was no drop off, and, and uh, people seem to be have a great time in the wider aisles. Um, uh, also about the library, there's some spring landscaping going in that the, uh, the chairman of the board said is going very nicely. Thank you, Councilperson Johnson, for helping. They uh, have four people rotating off the board, but happily, they've got seven candidates interested in filling. It's always hard to fill these kinds of positions, so they've done a good job in recruiting. <clears throat> That's it for the library. Oh, one last thing. Um, Brian already mentioned the inside out thing, but they're doing another artwork. Students at Rose Tree Elementary are doing a mural inside on the wall above the tech bar. It's going to be installed in early June, and there's going to be an unveiling on the 15th. So please, be there or be square. Okay, turning to uh, finance, the first thing I was doing this is uh, uh, ask for the ratification of the payment of the bills from April. From the general fund, we drew $418,926.42. Recreation fund, $3,369.02. And from the capital fund, $144,587,000. I move approval of those bills. Second. Motion is made and has been seconded. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the borough's April 2017 bill, payment of the, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The motion passes. It's always easy to talk about paying the bills that happened in the past, especially when the current uh, budget is sailing along pretty well, and it has been. Um, to, at the end of last month, we had uh, accumulated about 44% of our expected revenue for the year. That's only. April, so I mean, so only, only, yeah, only April, so that's four months in, we've already got almost half the money we expect to get, and we've only spent about 29% of the budget. So we're running well ahead of it, which is nice, and uh, I, ex I have no expectation that that will change over the course of the year. Um, the next thing I have is two mass gathering permits. The first is for the Delaware County United for Sensible Gun Policy Closing Ceremony for the National Gun Violence Awareness Day on Friday, June 2nd, 2017, from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Anyone that's been listening tonight knows that we've already had a presentation on this event, and I move approval for the permit. That's second. Motion to made it has been seconded. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the mass gathering permit application for Delaware County United for Sensible Gun Policy, uh, their event on Friday, June 2nd, evening thereof, 7 p.m. through to 10 p.m. Please say aye. 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 Yes, aye. Those opposed, please say nay. The motion passes. The next mass gathering permit is for Nativity VBM Church, Media Presbyterian Church, and Blue Root Vineyard Church's block party for teams on Saturday, June 17th. 2017 from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Nice and during the day, not at night. <laughs> but um, we have, I have no objection to the permit and I move uh, approval. Is there a second on the motion? Second. Any discussion on the motion? Where is it? Do you know? Franklin Street. Yeah. Between, yeah, between Monroe Street and Church Street. <coughs> and right, so it's for the Nativity or yeah, Presbyterian yeah. or Blue, Blue Roots. So. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah. Looks like it's going to be fun. Any other questions? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the mass gathering permit application for uh, the block party, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. Motion passes. Okay. The next item is uh, we need to renew our agreement with Brandywine Veterinarian Hospital for picking up of stray uh, animals in the borough. Uh, we used them in the past. The contract is the same. However, it automatically sunsetted. The only changes in the new contract is it's, it's well, it's the same fee schedule, but it has an automatic renewal. So I, we won't have to do this every time it uh, eclipses unless one of us wants to get out. So I move approval for the uh, renewal renewal agreement with Brandywine Veterinary Hospital. Second. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those who favor renewing the agreement with Brandywine Veterinary Hospital concerning uh, strays in, in Borough, please say aye. 
Um, I, I will suppose to say A. The motion passes. My last item is a PennDOT application uh, for the annual uh, Media Food and Craft Festival. We typically close Orange Street. It's a state road, so we have to apply to PennDOT to get that approval. Uh, we're requested to be part of that application, so I move uh, approval. Jordan's. Second. Um, the motion's been made and second, I think, is to request closure of Orange Street. Yeah, that's, that's better. Thank you. Um, and then is there a second on? Yes. All right. Any discussion on the motion? All right. All those in favor of uh, the of, uh, borough requesting closure of Orange Street for purposes of the annual media uh, food and craft festival, please say aye. Yes. Aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. Motion passes. That concludes my report. Any questions for Councilman Williamson? I do. Peter, I, I went back and tried to look with regards to public safety meetings since you took over as chair and with the hiring of the new police officer. I was not able to locate any public meeting dates with regards to uh, discussing. The last one I could find was January when I was chairman. The last time I could find anything that was at a public meeting was when there was discussion with doing a lot of changes and you know, looking at the, the current force, looking at bringing in uh, communications people or, or civilians to do some of the work so that these officers could spend more time. But since then, I could not locate, maybe I just uh, did not look in the right places with regards to the hiring of the new officer at any time in which there was any public meetings in which people of the borough would have had the opportunity to come in and discuss that prior to uh, us an executive session at 11.30 at night making the hire. Well, I, I'm going to have to turn to the borough manager for this one because we did change the schedule of the public safety committee meetings. I believe that was advertised, so it should be you know, public meetings just like any other committee meeting is. So I don't... I, I just didn't see anything referenced. I didn't see any agenda items. You know, there might be a public meeting, but if no one knows that there's anything on the agenda, I'm going to have a difficult time justifying or determining if they should come to the meeting. Well, that's a fair point. That's a very good point. Okay. So, from what I can gather, that there was no opportunity for input from the public with regards to hiring the new officer. I wouldn't say that, Paul. But if there's some, if, if there was there some, let me rephrase it then. Here, was there any offer, Was there any time in which the, the the discussion with regards to hiring of a new police officer ever referenced on an agenda? That I don't know. I've only been on the chair. I've only been on the public safety committee for a couple months. So the last really time I found anything is when was January when it was brought up at a workshop, and at that point there was a discussion of bringing back you know, the four platoons, which we did with the hiring of Officer DeVito. And then at that point there was discussion with regards to civilians filling in, doing some paperwork type of things to keep officers. The discussion was also with the idea of looking into an inspector or a detective uh, and at that point, I did send an, an email to the mayor requesting information, which never got a response. You did? No. Surprise. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just, you know, I, I still question the opportunity for transparency, the opportunity for our residents to at least have some sort of input. And this is and has been you know, and will be close to a $5 million investment over the course of the next 25 years. So I, I think it's something that, that I recognize that in the hiring itself, much of the discussion is done in an executive session. But I believe that the first time that our public was aware that we were hiring a second police officer in 90 days was the evening. All right, any other comments or discussions for Council Williamson? Um, Hearing none, we'll move on to Councilman Amy Johnson. Thank you. Um, I'll start with agenda item number one. Um, I would like to make a motion to ratify the letter of opposition to House Bill 1070, um, which is a bill that would prohibit Pennsylvania municipalities from enacting a ban 
tax fee or surcharge on recyclable plastic bags at the point of sale. Um, President Hall sent a letter to Senator Tom McGarrickel stressing um, environmental issues are critical to local health and wellness and if local municipalities wish to enact policies which encourage responsible consumption of plastic materials, they should have the right to do so. So I'd like to make a motion to ratify a letter of opposition to House Bill 1071. Second. Motion has been made and it has been seconded. Any discussion on the motion? Uh, hearing none, all those in favor of ratifying the letter of opposition to House Bill 1071, which has already been sent, uh, please say aye. Aye. Uh, those opposed, please say nay. The motion passes. Um, an announcement for uh, EAC, there will be an e-waste collection event um, on Saturday, May 20th from 9 to 1 p.m. in the Acme parking lot. Um, this is the opportunity for residents to, or, you know, residents to bring electronic recycling, it's, a re it's an electronic recycling drive, so basically anything with a plug um, can be um, recycled for free. There are a couple exceptions. Old style TVs will have a $30 disposal fee, and air conditioners will have a $10 fee. Um, if you have any questions um, about the event or about what you can and cannot bring, you can email Karen Talsic Lux at ktlux at mediaborough.com. Um, so that's May 20th. What are the hours? Nine to one. Why don't you repeat all that that uh, logistical information? Because that's really important. Yeah. A lot of people it's a, this is a, yeah, this the is a great yeah. opportunity to recycle. So Saturday, May 20th, from nine to one in the Acme parking lot. So, and, and for example, computers, monitors, things like that. Anything with a plug. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. Yeah. Like, my only question is, define old TV. Yeah, right. I don't I'm know. joking. <laughs> I'm not sure. Once it's so go click, 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 it only has black and white. <laughs> um, Another item under EAC, I would like to, um, just a reminder to all the dog owners out there, that there are some larger receptacles that have been placed at the dog waste stations. So, and in an effort to, um, so that there isn't a buildup of waste. Those receptacles, unfortunately, um, our public um, um, works staff are finding recyclable, um, uh, contents inside so if there might be a mistake that this is for recyclables and it's not it's for doll waste so if you see that receptacle next to a doll waste station it's for doll waste only um, I'm sure you can put trash in there as well but it's really for doll waste so just a reminder we're working on a um, a sticker that's going to be going on those um, that'll be an action <laughs> Oh, don't make me that. Um, for Can I pick up the language for it? Just no. a reminder that dog waste only. So, we'll, so, so be aware of that. Um, what else do I have here? Shade Tree. Um, I just, yeah, Shade Tree makes an effort um, that if a tree comes down, a tree goes up. So, um, if you have a tree that came down in front of your house, um, more than likely a new tree will be, it will be replaced with a new tree. If, however, you notice that a tree has not gone up or you just haven't had a tree in front of your house on the curb and you'd like one, you are more than welcome to contact the borough and you can even make a recommendation as to what tree you'd like as long as it falls under the, the list of shade trees that the commission recommends. Um, and one more item I'd like to address is that this is, at this time of year is usually when I am making an announcement that the farmer's market is um, starting up. Um, I want our residents to be aware that the farmer's market is on a hiatus. Um, we are taking, it is taking a sabbatical this year. Um, we are looking at new locations, possible new day and time. So I want our residents to know that it's, this is just temporary and that the goal is for us to have a new improved uh, market for 2018. So be patient and stay tuned. That concludes my report. Thank you. Any questions for Councilwoman Amy Johnson? Here we go. We'll move on to Councilwoman Sarah Dixon. Good evening. I have no voice. Uh -huh. <coughs> okay. 
Thank you. Um, when it comes to the publicity, there's been mostly um, around the politics recent with, with uh, um, media getting some, pu some positive and some not so positive press. Um, but as far as the archives and their last meeting, they were excited about some of the ideas that Adam has for uh, even bringing the youngsters in, like the uh, Boy Scouts. Uh, we did find that another link, and so we're working on that. And this week, very excited about Sarah Smith visiting. She even got a chance to spend, uh, Councilperson Robinson said, three hours in uh, his house, loving it. Uh, seems as though she brought lots of items from the uh, Admiral Cooper's, um, I guess, things. So that'll be something to look for in the future. This is all I'm going to say. That's my Thank you, Sarah. Any questions for Sarah, please? No. Um, Sarah, did you notice Okay. Um, we have uh, come to the point of, the, the, of our meeting where we have our second session of public comment and privilege to the floor. If there's anyone here who wishes to address council, please come to the microphone. Tell us your name and where you live. We have no takers. So, at this point, I will entertain a motion to adjourn, which has been made. It's been seconded. Thank you, folks. Good night.